Hello everyone. I am Chu Xiafan. Now I work at Terret as an engineer, and I'm a scale can PMC. I took the need on the scale can record about you and created the scale can browser agent project. Um, I'm honored to attend this technical party online. Here I will share end user tracing in a scale can observable browser. Let's see the agent. There are five part, parts, including the background introduction, where we implement browser agent, um, exception nodes capture and the source map location, um, performance metrics collection and calculation, and uh, make the browser the starting point for distributed tracing. Finally, uh, report data to self site. First, I will introduce the background about the scalking challenges uh, where we implement it for scalking. Uh, as you can see, a uh, web application performance affects the retention rate of users. If a page load time is too long, the user will give up. So we need to monitor the web application to understand a performance and ensure that servers are stable, available, and healthy. Uh, Skalki is an APM tool designed especially for cloud-native and container-based architectures. Uh, its Skyhawking client JS is a um, lightweight, set client side JavaScript exception, um, performance, and tracing library. It has a browser agent to expand and covers uh, the web DOM for Skyhawking. Um, the second part it is about caption. Mm, exception logs and the source map location with logs. With the continuous expansion of the project and the continuous access of customers, the stability of the project has become a major challenge for the team. When users or team testers encounter problems, the probability is to directly throw a wet screen page or a screenshot of the wrong UI to the developers. Mm, and the error does not have to be present, which makes the front end and the back end the developers feel headache take about the persuasion problem. Uh, is there a way to improve uh, the user appearance and help? developers quickly locate and solve problems? Um, the answer is yes. Based on the business brink of customer is God, it is the responsibility of front-end developer to create a good user experience for uh, users. When an error occurs on a page, it is undoubtedly a more friendly way to remind users of what is happening at the right time than when the page crashes or does not move. Here we will introduce error types. Mm, instance of uh, error objects as when runtime errors occur. Seven error types defined in ECML to set to specification. Mm, the errors uh, are error, avoid ev error, range error, reference error, syntax error, tab error, UI error. Mm, so let's us see all of the tabs detail. Uh, the error objects are thrown when runtime errors occur. 
The error object can also be used as a base object for user defined exceptions. Uh, other errors inherit from this type. In other words, error is a, um, the error is the best class for all errors. errors. Um, usually, you create an error object with the intention of raising it using the throw keyword. You can handle the error uh, you, using the check cache construct. Uh, the evoid object indicates uh, an error regarding the global evoid function. This uh, exception is not thrown by JavaScript anymore. However, the evoid object remains for compatibility. Let's see the example. You can handle the evoid error using the check catch construct. Uh, range error. The range error object indicates an error when a value is not in the set or range of allowed values. The example handles range error using the check catch construct. Uh, the A is an array, and its length should be greater or equal to zero. A reference error. The reference error object represents an error when a non existent variable is referenced. Mm, here is an example for it. Um, call the x that isn't defined. Uh, syntax error. The syntax error object represents an error when trying to interpret syntactically invalid code. It is thrown when the JavaScript engine encounters tokens or token order that does not conform to the syntax of the language when passing code. Uh, by the way, the track head isn't able to capture the syntax error. Mm, type error. The type error object represents an error when an operation could not be performed, typically when a value is not of the uh, accepted type. Um, for the example, we can't read the property f of none. UI error. The UI error object represents an error when a global UI handling function was used in a wrong way. For this example, the metaformed UI can occur an error. There are several um, abnormal salaries in the project that need to be handled. They are syntax error, uh, event exception, HTTP request exception, static resource loading exception, promise exception, iframe exception, and uh, page crash. Exceptions are everywhere and uh, exist in a variety of application salaries. Um, how can the effective inceptor Exceptions. Uh, stranger errors in the candle and make users insensitive. There are some medicines to catch errors and uh, some exams to uh, show details. Um, the first medicine is uh, check hedge. It's only runtime errors generated by some Sinclair's code can be captured. And uh, this is nothing you can do about the syntax errors and uh, errors generated by a Sinclair's code. 
exception capture for code that may have errors and ensure that the following code continue, continues to run. Next is promise catch. It, catch. it can catch errors in promise code, syntactic errors and asynchronous code errors cannot be caught. Unhanded rejection. When promise is rejected and there is no reject processor, the unhanded rejection event will be triggered. Listen for the uncurred promise error globally. For the code, it provides uh, missed uh, promise exceptions. Window on error. It can catch just around time errors. It can catch errors in set timeout and set interval of um, a sync knowledge code, but not syntax error and resource loading error. Um, for the code, when the JavaScript runtime error occurs, the window will trigger an event of the error event interface and execute a window on error. Window add even is not error. Um, on the basis of the same catching errors as is, Window at the event listener can catch resource loading errors. Exception called in React. The array boundary is a React component which can catch and print JavaScript errors anywhere in its sub component tree, and it will render the then by UI set of those crashed sub-component trees, the error boundary catch errors during rendering in the left circuit medicine. And uh, in the constructor of the entire component tree, the error boundary is the React 16 introduce a new concept. Um, note that it cannot catch the errors generated in the following slurries. They are even pro cc A sync slurries code, several set rendering, um, errors thrown by itself. Uh, this is um, quoted from React's uh, official website. Mm. And there are examples that uh, catch errors with Angular and the uh, view for scaling agent browser. Um, we can visit this link to get this. HTTP request exception in browser agent. There are two interceptors with XML HTTP requests and the fetch API. Mm. The XHR ready state change is a customer event. We catch errors by the XHR ready state change for XML HTTP request. Red is for fetch API. Mm, we defined it window fetch hand um, parameter login, reading the body uh, without handling the original corner by cloning the response and uh, providing a mock response. Um, this is a process for capturing exceptions. Uh, we use a uh, a Synlorix event to um, change and uh, generate it, and uh, this can avoid recatch errors. Uh, 
uh, exception matrix, the scalping client.js traces error data to the uh, OIP server, and finally visualizing data on the US side for an error overview of the app. There are several metrics for basic statics and uh, chains of errors, uh, including the following metrics. Um, FGS error rates, the proportion of PV with GS errors in a selected time per rate to total PV. All of apps error count, token apps error count Ricky. All of the apps GS error rate, token apps GS error rate Ricky. Error count of versions in the selected app, top one error count of versions in the selected app, Reiki. Um, error rate of versions in the sele selected app, top one GS error rate of versions in the selected apps, app, Reiki. Um, error count of the selected app, top one error on count of the selected app recce error rates uh, of the selected app top one gs error rate of the selected app recce oh this is a dashboard for browser agent it visualizes some exception metrics um, we can uh, get the error count and the chain for apps. At the same time, we can view the log detail on your site. So, map error location. Uh, this is a schema for source map error location. Mm. First, the browser agent collects the error log and views the error details in the UI. Second, generate the corresponding source map file from the source code. The source map file contains the complete file information. A mapping records the string of location information, um, such as line corresponds location correspondence location conversation and other information and so on the source map file uh, can be generated by webpack or other tools third the source map file and error details can be used to Analyze the accurate GS error location through the tool, uh, such as Clojure Compare. The third part is performance metrics collection and calculation. The Scalking Clanges use navigation timely API for performance data collection. From the MDA document, the performance interface provides access to performance-related information for the current page. It's part of the high-resolution time API, but it's enhanced by the performance timely API, the navigation timely API, the user timely API, and the resource timely API. In scaling collages, all performance metrics are calculated according to the navigation time API defined in the W3C specification. We can get a performance navigation timely object describing our page using the window uh, get entries by type navigation property. Mm. The performance navigation timely interface contains properties that offer performance timely information for various events. 
that occur during the loading and the use of the current page. Uh, navigation time API is this finger. Ego attributes the timely attributes defined by the performance navigation timely interface. Uh, this is the process in model of navigation timely in the second edition of W3C. Uh, from the unloading of the old page in the current browser window to the loading of the new page, the whole process is divided into nice small blocks. Mm, they are promote to unload the old document, redirection unloading. Application catch DNS resolution, TCP handshake, HTTP request processing, HTTP response processing, DOM, processing and the file loading. Uh, the beginning and the end, the middle of each small block are divided by events, and the Unix time step is taken. The time difference between two events in, is calculated to obtain the time consumption of the intermediate process. Uh, as you can see, we call the performance get, get interest by type navigation. We can get those performance properties. Uh, use those data, we can calculate many import metrics, such as page redirection time, time to DNS query. Time to first bet, time to TCP link, time to content transfer, time to DOM analysis, um, first append time, time to DOM ready, page for load time, time to resource loading, time to SL circuit connection, time to interact, time to first package. First, meaningful point. It cannot be obtained from the navigation time API, and we need to measure it ourselves. Um, usually, this time is also used to evaluate and the wide screen time perceived by users. Uh, listen for change in page elements. Traverse each new element and calculate the total score of those elements. If the element is visible, the score is uh, one times weight. If the element is not visible, the score is zero. Um, with this standard, we will start to collect the information of each node of the page in the process of page loading. The rendering time of the node and the score of the node. Here connect by listening to mutation observer. When the document already of the um, page is complete or the load even is triggered, when Stop the mutation observer listening and start uh, calculating the k loads and uh, mm, first uh, meaningful point time. Uh, single page application. In single page application, the page will be refreshed only once. The traditional medicine only reports PV once uh, after the um, page loading, but 
um, connect count the pp of each subpage and uh, connect can't make other types of logs great great get by subpage uh, the sdk provides to processing a uh, medicine for single page of location page the first medicine uh, Enable single page of location automatic parsing. This medicine is suitable for most single page of location slurries with URL hash uh, as the router. Uh, in the initialized in config, configuration item, set enable SPA. Um, to to which it will try to the pages hash change event event listening and uh, use URL hash as the page field in other data reporting. The second medicine, um, menu reporting. This medicine can be uh, used in all single page application slurries. This medicine can be used if the first medicine is invalid. The SDK provides a set page medicine to um, malleable update uh, the page name when data is reported. When this medicine is called, the page PV will be reported by default. Uh, the code for this. Mm. This chart is the result of a visualization of our famous matrix. We can use this for optimizing the page. Um, the fourth path is uh, uh, make the browser on the starting point for distributed tracing. Mm, the Skalkin client just intercepts HTTP requests to trace segments and spans. It uh, supports checking the following modes of HTTP requests. They are uh, XML HTTP requests and the fetch API. It also supports checking libraries and tools based on XML HTTP requests and the fetch API, such as um, Alloy Super Agent, uh, Open API, and so on. Here we'll introduce those interceptors. Uh, realizing interception functions. The first is for uh, XML HTTP requests. It, best, it will based on the XML HTTP request object as the accepting, acceptation implies the user defined event XML HTTP, uh, XHR ready state change through custom event to listen to the user defined event. Each request state change will trigger the user defined event XHR ready state change. The second is for fetch API. Uh, it uses an async function to return the result returned by the fetch and assign the fellow result to the new fetch. Uh, let's see the interception functions. Uh, left is, the left is the XML GB request in interceptor, which defines the custom event. XHR ready state change, which can even handle this, that, that is called whenever the ready state attribute changes. The callback is called from the user interface road. The channel HTTP request on 
a real estate change property contains the event handle to be called when the real estate change event is filed. Uh, that is the very time the real estate property of the XML HTTP request changes. The red is fetch API interceptor. Uh, we defined it when the fetch hand parameter login, uh, reading the body without having the original corner by calling the response and uh, providing a mock response. The browser agent intercepts the HTTP request, injects parameters after interception the request, generates sigma and uh, span, and reports them to the OIP server. Uh, finally, the trace is visualized. The browser calls the servers. Uh, and uh, the status as normal. The fifth part is uh, reporting data to server side. Uh, agent captures performance data, accepting logs and uh, segments. Then it will report all of the data to server side. That is uh, Mm, observability analysis a platform server. There are three ways to send data. The first way is the navigator send bulk. Um, most modern browsers support the navigation send bulk method. This method can be uh, used to send a small amount of static and uh, then low static data, especially suitable for the salary of uh, reporting statics. The data is reliable and the browser cloud request can still be sent. A synchronous execution will not affect the loading of the next page. The API is easy to use. The second way is image tag. Um, it's advantage that here is no XCrow DOM problem and crawl cross source requests can be made. Um, very old text, no browser compatibility issues. The third way is uh, XML HTTP request or fetch API. Um, it has a cross uh, DOM problem. Um, multiple requests, uh, request tabs are supported and good flexibility. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for your listening.